I, I reached out to, to Don Lemon uh, when they did the Sesame Street uh, program on CNN about uh, racism, and I told them what a, a wonderful thing to do. Do. This is Blair Durham with Black Wall Street Today, your media hub for all things black entrepreneurship, politics, news, and events in Hampton Roads and beyond. And now, here's your host, Blair Durham. Welcome back. It's the 107th edition of Black Wall Street Today with Blair Durham. I am super excited. Breathe, we have with breathe, us comedian, breathe, actress, breathe. writer, entertainer, full-time mom, part-time superhero, Miss Coco Brown. Whenever actress, comedian, and Screen Actors Guild Award nominee Coco Brown takes the stage, the world stands still. Brown is undeniably one of the most talented comics and performers of this generation. The Newport News, Virginia native, born Sarah Brown, assails her craft with such passion and soul-searching veracity. When she claims the stage, the ensuing act is nothing short of a force of nature. Coca Brown audaciously draws from painful reminiscences and hard knock lessons, bravely weaving humorous tales that uplift, upend, and upgrade everything you thought you knew about comedy. What is it that drives the comic who female fans nationwide have named the truth? It's the sheer will of a woman who survived the worst life had to offer and is still standing. Most notably known for her lead role in Tyler Perry's The Single Moms Club and for better or worse, the hilarious comedian actress Coco Brown treats audiences to thought-provoking humor in which she declares, I don't tell jokes, I tell the truth. Her grown woman delivery, both on stage and on the screen, in supporting roles such as FX's American Crime Story, NBC's Marlin, and most recently, Fox's critically acclaimed 911, has generated a large and lo- loyal following all over the world and has proven to her fans, old and new, that not only is she a funny comedian, but she's also a versatile actress. Coca has had guest star roles on several other notable TV projects, including Two Broke Girls, Psych the Soul Man, and Breaking Bad, as well as supporting roles in major motion pictures, including Ted 2, in which she was handpicked for the role of Joy by Seth MacFarlane, Lakeview Terrace with Samuel L. Jackson, and His, Hers, and the Truth, which was one of the official selections of the 2019 American Black Film Festival. Not only do audiences get a great show, but they feel as though they've gained a friend. Koga says, if my audience feels like they know me, then that means I've connected with them and I've shared my gift. Koga has a style that relates to both women and men and an energy and warmness on and off the stage that has earned her the respect and love of crowds and colleagues alike. There's no doubt that you will see Coca Brown continue to take her life and her career by the reins and maneuver it on her terms. And what will manifest from that will blow your minds. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you? Thank you. I'm good. How are you? <laughs> Such a beautiful bio. I was reading it this morning. I said, I have to share all that love. I'm so oh, glad to have Lord. you. I'm so happy to be here, honey. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting up here like laughing like she's really going to read the whole she's thing. She's going to read the whole thing. <laughs> she was not joking when she said that. I mean, it's just something for me to read it, you know. I'm thinking about you and holding you in admiration. So I guess we should talk 2020. How are you keeping the folks smiling during all of this? Oh, my ch- I'll tell you, honey, if, if nothing else, social media has been a lifesaver of just keeping yourself out there, you know, I mean, between the social media platforms like, you know, Instagram and Facebook, and then, of course, you know, Zoom and other, you know, platforms, you know, people sure. have, have turned it to, you know, turned it to virtual, everything's virtual, which is great, but it's a true testament of your talent, you know, can you make people laugh when you don't have that immediate gratification of hearing the laughter? So, you know, it lets me know that apparently I must be doing something right because people keep bringing me on their virtual comedy shows and virtual platforms. And, you know, I've just been, you know, making it work for me, honey, making it do what it do, as Ray Charles say. Yes, (laughs) I love it. So what is the driving force? Like, this, I mean, in my estimation, this is a, a pretty painstaking work that you do. I mean, you bear your soul on the comedy stage. Yeah. What's, yeah. What's, what drives that? 
You know, when I took, when I realized that, you know, when I first got in the business, I was being a stand-up comic, you know, and I was working on my craft, and it was like, you know, to get discovered, to get discovered, to, to get into the film industry, get in the TV industry. Now, comedy has become truly my therapy. I'm a single mom to... Uh, a very uh, energetic and inquisitive eight-year-old. And, you know, having this time during this pandemic of being home, I mean, I haven't spent this much time with my kids since he was in my belt. Wow. So to be with him day in and day out, to be able to go to every football game, go to the PTA meetings, you know, be active and involved with his teachers as much as I have been, and then being able to watch his growth every day has been a blessing for me, but it also has provided me a plethora of material because I'm telling you, it's like seeing the world through an eight-year-old's eyes, honey. Yes. Baby, if you want the truth, ask a kid, okay? Yes. No, that, <laughs> you know, that is real. My driving force is him right now. It's like, you know, making sure that he knows that mommy's here and this is a blessing, even though we're in the middle of a, a pandemic, that mommy is here, you know, 24-7 for him right now, you know, and working on my other businesses and, you know, working the virtual aspect of everything and, you know, just taking a moment to breathe. I actually got to smell the roses, you know, for a minute yeah. and look back at everything I've accomplished and actually take a moment to take it all in because, you know, you get so focused on the prize, sometimes you miss the scenery on the way. So I've been able to take it all in. So this has been a blessing in the midst of all this, actually. No, I love it. So what is his take on things? Like, <laughs> is, I assume he's doing some kind of virtual school scenario. How is he navigating? He was. Okay. You know, he was uh, he was doing it, you know, when it's, everything started in the spring, he went completely virtual. And I was blown away at the maturity level of my child because once we, you know, I, you know, we got into the rhythm of you get up, we get dressed, we get our breakfast, we get on that laptop and we do work. He was doing it on his own. And he was like literally saying, mommy, you rest, you rest. I got it. I'll make you some cereal. And I'm like, what? Wow. You know? And so he, his maturity blew my mind that this child could be so, um, you know, responsible. Mm -hmm. And then now, you know, he's going back to school. Luckily, the county that I live in here in Georgia, um, they have gone above and beyond to ensure the safety of our children. And uh, he's going to school now five days a week, half a day. Um, they wear masks. Um, it has been uh, actually a, a great transition from what they were used to. And he looks forward to going to school. But you know, it, it, it's funny because, I, like I said, I've not spent this much time at home, so it really made me get into my bag, you know, and really focus and uh, work on my other businesses because at one point, TV and film and stand-up had shut completely down. Wow. And, um, you know, I'm doing more TV and film than I'm doing stand-up right now. A lot of the, uh, you know, you know, 911 has started back filming. I'm going back to start working on Never Have I Ever, the show I'm on on Netflix uh, the end of this month. I've shot a plethora of independent films, independent projects, which I'm loving because, you know, you got to keep your, you know, you got to keep your tools sharp, you know? So um, it has just been a, a very interesting ride. But to see the way he sees things, you know, when everything was going on with like the George Floyd thing, you know, and, you know, him watching, my, my child watches the news. He watches the news with me. And having to explain to an eight-year-old what's going on, yeah, you know, sometimes we don't give our kids the credit they deserve in terms of what they see and what they understand, right. you know. And, you know, he's like, at eight years old, he's like, Mommy, I don't judge people on what they look like. I judge on how they treat me. And I'm like, that's right, baby, that's right. He goes, wow. now, they treat me bad. They're just a bad person. He goes, I don't care if you have strikes or polka dots, you know. You're either a good person or you're not. And I'm like, that's right, baby, you know. And, um, you know, it, it, it's weird that, you know, this child can understand something like that, that, you know, you judge people by their character, their integrity, who they are as a human being, not by what they look like on the outside. And raising a emotionally and socially, spiritually mature young man. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. He's a little woke. He's a little, he's a little woke. A little woke. <laughs> yeah. He's a little woke. He's a little woke. I think this generation, I mean, they're not going to have much of a choice when it comes to whether they're going to be woke or not, you know, because Absolutely. everything is Absolutely. right here in, in our faces. There's nothing subtle about 2020, that's for sure. So. No, not at all. Not at all. You know, and I think that as parents, we need to have those conversations with our children. Indeed. And it's, it's, it's basically about having the conversation and meeting them where they are. You know, uh, I, I I reached out to, to Don Lemon uh, when they did the Sesame Street uh, program on CNN about uh, racism. And I told them what a, a wonderful thing to do for kids because they needed to see from their perspective what was going on around them. You know, we can try really hard to keep our kids in a bubble, but our kids are going to be exposed. There's stuff on YouTube. There's stuff on their cartoons. There's subliminals everywhere. And these kids need to know that they can come to mommy and daddy or whatever and ask the hard questions. And, you know, just to explain be, right? it to them. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, and explain it to them where they are. You know, I I, I try to you know, explain everything to my son in an eight-year-old's mindset, you know, of how he would see things, you know. Um, you know, people people sometimes like, I don't know what to say to a kid. Well, put yourself in their shoes. How do you see things mm -hmm. as, as a child? You know, yeah. and, and, and it's worked for me. You know, it's worked for me. And he knows that, you know, there are people out here that will judge him by his skin color. But the key is to always hold your character and your integrity to a higher level than that. I appreciate that. Not many are saying that. You know, that we still have to maintain our character even inside the Absolutely. system, you know. Wow. Yeah. Jeez, that. I um, yeah. thought about two things I wanted to ask. I'm trying to decide which one I want to ask first. I think I want to go <laughs> to kind of being from Newport News, right? And just. Okay. Huh, Hampton Roads is, a, is, a, is yeah. an interesting place. I'm just one who believes that there are always opportunities. Um, but I know that has not been everyone's experience, you know, and you think about mm -hmm. wanting to get to where you have gotten. What was that journey like? How did you kind of wiggle out of, <laughs> you know, right, and, right, and, right, and, right, into, right. and into, like, you know, what, what was that like? And what advice would you give thinking about those that are coming up behind you who may be, you know, working on their, their MFA degrees or, you know, perfecting their talent. What, what would you say to somebody that is trying to explore um, acting or comedy on, on the world stage? I mean, first of all, I think the first thing you have to be is fearless. Mm. Um, because, you yeah. know, a lot of times... We, 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 we put a limitation on our children. And I, and I, and I got to be real with you. I grew up with that limitation. I, w I grew up in a very traditional Southern black household. Um, you, know, you know, I grew up, you know, and I was in cotillions and debutante balls. And I was raised a certain way that I was supposed to basically be this lady and carry myself a certain way. Go to college, get a degree, meet a man, get married, have babies, come to my parents' house every Sunday after church. Like, it was supposed to be that very cut and dry in my life and I knew that I always wanted more there was something in me that always wanted more I was always uh, a, a, a child that marched to the beat of my own drum because even when I would attempt to be a follower it always felt foreign to me didn't work out so <laughs> they didn't work out I always felt like I was walking in someone else's shoes wow. and you know I knew that I had to appease my parents to the to the extent of getting this degree that they had paid for mm -hmm. um, but once I got that degree, I was like, I've got to do me. And I didn't even know what that was. It took a friend of mine to see something in me that I didn't even see. I never thought about being a stand-up comic. That never crossed my mind. I mean, you know, in my, in my yearbook, it says, what do you, where do you see yourself in five years? I said, I'm Claire Huxtable. Like, <laughs> like, Love it. like, seriously, that was my hero growing up. I wanted to be Claire Huxtable. I know she wasn't a real character, but to me, she was the epitome of what I wanted to be. Um, the irony is I meet... Felicia Rashad years later wow. and I literally 
like was like, you don't understand. I wanted to be you. And she said, oh, baby, you know, and I'm like, no, seriously, like you were real to me. Yes. Like, you, you were a goal. Yes. And oh, you know, like, I still strive for that. And it's not even like, you know, not so much so as a lawyer and all that, but it was just the class and the way she raised her children and the way she carries herself and yes. you know, all these things about her. Mm-hmm. And so... You know, coming into stand-up comedy, it took a friend of mine to get me in the business because I didn't, I didn't, like I said, I wasn't thinking about being a comic. I mean, you let my friends tell it. I was always funny. I always made them laugh, but I never was ever in the mindset that this would be what I do for a living. Um, you know, Coco Brown was a name that was given to me by another comic. You know, everything about Coco Brown was almost made by what other people saw in me that I didn't see in myself. And wow. literally in the last couple of years, I have realized that Coca Brown is merely a derivative of Sarah Brown. And like literally my whole mantra for the last few years has been reclaiming Sarah, reclaiming Sarah. Wow. Because I was this character, this personality, this image of what other people saw me as. And now, you know, I'm getting back into me, learning me and embracing me. And it's it's weird because it feels so good. And I didn't realize that I was, you know, being something else for so long. Um, you know, but mm, it's it, 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 you know, seriously, you know, it's like no, just you know, the thing, two I, things stuck out of what you said. Not to interrupt, but we, oh, we're actually sure. out of time. But the two things that stuck out okay. is you had this incredible self awareness as a child to know something's not right about the way I'm following, right? Something in me craves more. But then to look now and say, let me find Sarah. You know what I mean? That same kind of self-awareness to recognize a a disconnect. I think that is incredibly profound. And we have to have you back on this platform to just explore this conversation further. I'm thinking we're about to cut up and just... But we went deep. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but I would tell anybody... I would tell anybody coming from my hometown, nothing holds you back but you. Yeah. And you have to be fearless. And you have to be fearless in your pursuit of what will make you happy and make you whole. And you owe no one out of time. Oh, God. We're out of time. Let her have it. It's okay. Our it's producer okay. is texting me like, yo, yo, wrap it up. Listen, if you want more Coco Brown like I do, you got to get your Black Diamond Weekend ticket, blackdiamondweekendva.com. I want to thank our sponsors, the COO team, Milestone Mental Health Agency, as well as Apex Financial Group of Virginia. And a tremendous thank you to Farrah Brown, better known as Coco yeah. Brown. Thank you for your life yeah. and your legacy and your leadership. I'm looking forward to getting together this time next week. <laughs> well, next Saturday, really. Um, during Black Diamond Weekend. Hey, it's Black Wall Street today where we're building minds, building connections, and we're forging the path ahead toward business success in the black community. Talk soon. Talk soon. Talk soon. This show is brought to you by Positive Vibes Incorporated our consulting services. We do credit fixes, tax resolution, we lend private money to real estate investors, and we do debt consolidations. Basically, we put money in your pocket when you need money. We put money in your pocket when you need money. 757-932-0177. Stay with us online at Black Wall Street Today on Facebook and Black Wall Street Today on Instagram. And then follow us on Twitter as well at BWS Today. We look forward to talking again next week. Have a wonderful week. I have said and I will continue to say that the most important priority for the black community is the black community, not a particular political party. Hey, yo, when I say black, you say Wall Street. What? Black Wall Street. When I say black, you say Wall Street. Black. Black. When I say black, you say Wall Street. Black. Black. When I say black, you say Wall Street. Black. Black. Uh. Black Wall Street. Black Wall Street. Thank you. Thank you.
you. <laughs>